Welcome back to the charismatic voice. This one is my choice. I love lobster and I love making weird noises even more. I know many of you are wondering, have I heard this before? I am familiar with it, but today's gonna be the first time that I do a deep dive analysis and try to recreate all of those weird, funny noises on camera. But before we get started, I wanna give a shout out of thanks to the sponsor for today's video, Factor. It's the holiday season, and that means that most of us are extremely busy and we still wanna look good for those upcoming gatherings. It might feel impossible to eat healthy when you've barely got time to shop for gifts, but it's not. Enter Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutritional goals possible by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals straight to your doorstep. This is what was delivered to my doorstep. <laughs> I love this part. Okay. It's really well packaged. Preserves everything well. Ooh, this one has juice. Apple, kale, wheatgrass, cold pressed juice. We have apple beet ginger. Mm, nice, I love ginger. Pineapple, turmeric, basil. Carrot, orange, ginger. Ooh, I love that. I make that at home sometimes and it is difficult to make at home. Let's see, what's this? Roasted veggie and pesto tortellini. That sounds great. Hey hubby. While we're waiting for that to cook, I'm gonna check out this juice. I've never tried this one before. Ooh, <laughs> carrot, orange, ginger. Mm. Oh yeah. Ooh, that's super fresh. I love that they offer juice now too. There are so many meal options to choose from. It's really great and it can meet all kinds of diet needs as well. Plus, it only takes two minutes in the microwave, just two minutes. It's perfectly cooked every time. Even my busy schedule can fit that in. <gasps> it's time. Ha, yeah, woo, steamy. I love that they always include veggies on the side. It's really hard for me to get my veggies in every day unless I'm doing this. Oh! Big fork. Mmm, <laughs> oh, steamy, awesome, mmm. I've been to several Thanksgiving dinners that this meal from Factor would beat. If you also want to eat healthy, delicious food and not worry about how that's gonna happen during the holiday season, go to factor75.com or click the link below and enter the code charismatic50 to get 50% off of your first Factor box. Now, let's get to some delicious music. <laughs> So we have a fun weird noise right away to try to recreate. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds like they're using a bleeding vibrato. Like that kind of sound. That's a bleeding vibrato that creates like a sort of shiver and stuff. They're doing it really fast though. Ooh, that takes some practice to get it up to that fast. That'd be fun. Um, and that means essentially that the glottis or like the opening between the vocal folds is, uh, you get an attack on it right at the beginning, first of all. So there's a glottal attack. So there's breath pressure that I hear built up behind that and it bursts, and that's what initiates the sound. And then there's this re-attack of the sound, which creates a bleating vibrato, not the same thing as a Western vibrato that's like, ah, right? That has a nice sort of evenness. This is like, uh, some call them, sometimes called a machine gun vibrato because of the, <laughs> that kind of feeling, only they're doing it really fast. <laughs> With static. We were at a party. The dear Lord fell in the day. Someone reached in and grabbed it. What the rock lost the job. What the rock lost the job. Okay, so. I just learned their names today, of course. This is the B-52s, but the singers, uh, you have two ladies. I used to think it was more when I heard this song, but I can tell now you've got some doubling of their voices and you have Cindy Wilson and Kate Pearson are uh, these backup vocals that we're hearing. And then you have Fred Schneider on this lead kind of speaky voice. 
And yeah, it, it almost sounded a little more chorusy to me in the past. Having these on, uh, I can hear that they've doubled up on, it sounds like those backing parts, and that's what I was missing. So it's only two ladies, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was that's a um oh gosh is that harmonic minor i think is the name of that scale it often sounds like very uh exotic in many ways, which is kind of a cool skill to choose for a rock lobster. They're very exotic. Maybe not the same type of exotic though, so it's funky. <laughs> of like uh, a, a rock lobster shimming? Is that what that sound is? They missed the scatting before. I don't know, but I have to say a lot of what I read in lyrics and what I've heard uh, in this song is utter delightful nonsense. So maybe that's just them having fun making weird noises, which is really, really awesome. Respect. <laughs> Reminds me of Weird Al a little bit in the delivery that he's got like a little more uh, forward placement, a little more nasality to the sound, but he actually has just a natural, uh, somewhat full-throated baritone speaking voice, which is hilarious that he then threads that through his nose, gives it again lots of additional layers of humor. Everybody had matching towels. Matching towels. under a jaw. I love the way that this entire song tells a ridiculous story. They're like, they're at the beach. They got the towels. There was a rock. <gasps> but it wasn't a rock. It was a rock lobster. <laughs> it takes what could be a very mundane experience and makes it total brilliance and the most fun to just jam out to while you're at home and you know the, the kiddo's eating dinner and you're like I'm gonna dance and make the the kiddo smile while he eats dinner yeah this is that song everybody had matching towels somebody went under a dock and there they saw a rock it wasn't a rock what's a rock I ever noticed that before. It was, that was hilarious. He hopped up into his falsetto for that one. What? I think it's so hilarious the combination of instruments. Of course, you've got like a, a tambourine that's going in there. You've got, you've got guitars. I think there might be a bass in there. Um, there are just hilarious synth sounds that are going on too, that um, they're uh, very pointed. I like the way that they don't, they don't have a lot of reverb on them. They, they definitely fade away fairly quickly. It's uh, everything feels snarky. This is like the example of snarky in every aspect of music. <laughs>
There's that exotic scale again. Descending, of course. Ooh, okay, so this is made. She's starting in head voice on red la ha. That is all head voice. And then when she breaks, or no, while she's up there, she does that bleeding vibrato, bleeding like a goat, okay? Singing about a lobster, but sounding like a goat. So bleating vibrato on the top note in head voice, then she actually like yodels down to the note below. That's hilarious. <laughs> Everybody should try this because what happens, it's not going to work as well for guys because your break is different from a female break. But what's happening when you go down is it, you have to like force into that bottom in a really funky way after the bleaching vibrato. This is so fun and explorational. La ha. <laughs> La ha. That was closer. I need to work on a bleaching vibrato. I I don't hardly ever use it, and it does require practice. It's fun to practice, though. And then, la ha, there's my, like, opera, opera chest voice. Ah, like, <laughs> enters in. That's fun. That's ridiculous. Um, Y'all, please play and try this, too, because all of us should make weird noises together. Ocean in the ocean. Uh, she even gets nasality on that. That's funny. I never realized that the giant clam has like a little a little theme line afterwards. That's hilarious. He was in a jam. He was in a That's the giant clams theme right there. As they were descending, there's then one voice that took off and decided to go back up. That was really cool. And it's also interesting to hear so much of the instrumental bottom drop out at that point. It really does feel like almost cartoonish in the way we're descending. Down, down. We've got a parallel octave going there. And then top voice takes back up. That would be uh, Cindy going back up, I think. And that's back to the beginning where you have that little moment of scatting and then, uh, then goats singing together. Maybe they're trying to be dolphins nearby there. Because dolphins, like, they make a sound that often feels like fast glottal reattacks when people imitate it. Maybe we'll get into that later, though. reason I feel like he reminds me of a grandpa who's going along the beach and talking about these things and then right there was a the moment when grandma was like what rock lobster the best <laughs> 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 
really heavily into simple dissonances in the instrumentals. That's what makes it feel like a little gnarly at times. And then it'll resolve back up. Right there, dissonant. Back to consonant. I, I love the way repetitively in this song we get moments where our ears will clear out an instrument. We'll be drawn to a solo line momentarily and then they bring the other things back in. It happens over and over and over and it's part of what makes this song so much fun and feel like you could keep playing it forever. That one even had like a ha, ah, like a little. Um, she's it, she was briefly on the top note before hopping back down in a chest voice. Almost, uh, it almost had a Middle Eastern vibe to it. I'm gonna do this. My hair, ugh. As I bounce it around, it feels like it's coming more and more undone and it's distracting me from listening. So we're gonna, gonna come back one more time. Um, by the way, if you guys were also trying to copy some of these sounds we've had so far, don't be surprised if you have a total vocal splat, please do that. I will also do vocal splats here, I'm sure. Um, I heard, had like a, a pretty close vocal splat earlier. It's what they've been doing so far is playing with like really fun extended vocal techniques. So things like the the bleeding vibrato, that is something you and I very likely uh, just don't do. Uh, so learning how to do it, it's going to feel really noisy. It's probably going to sound pretty awful at first. And if you sound like a dying seagull, I promise you I've already sounded like a dying seagull and posted it for the world to see online and that's okay. I'll link to that video at the end. Right, snap or snap it. So that part is partly really exciting because it's all the same lettered note. It's going between different octaves, but it's just sitting on that same note the whole time. And we're like, oh, where's it gonna go? Where's it gonna go? And he's hopping between different octaves at unexpected times even to show that it's excited and that this building is not gonna like kind of peter out into the distance or something. There's even a dynamic build at one point and it's, it makes me extra excited. Yeah, definitely going down. Also, this reminds me of the doll aria. Those of you who saw that way back when, I, I did a, a fun analysis of uh, the doll song that is in uh, the Tales of Hoffman. Funny, funny opera. And there's a mechanical doll that winds down in this opera song, essentially, and then gets wound back up to continue at certain times. And she has a similar passage of like descending chromatics at one point. And, and just all kind of droops down. So now I want to see what the opera version of this is. Down, down, down. Oh. 
feel like we just landed. Ooh, key change. Okay, we're gonna try and make that sound, but what, I'm gonna do something. Well, so is this gonna mess up my levels? I'm gonna do this sound, but it's gonna sound loud. Okay, so we're gonna leave the levels as is, and if they peak, too bad. This has got a really similar thing that they've been doing all along, where you have this uh, glottal attack. Uh, Right, if you do that, almost like you're clearing your throat, but try not to have as much abrasiveness. Like, <clears throat> that has a lot of extra stuff going on. <clears throat> like, I, I, or um, at. If you were to start that really heavy, that's called a glottal attack. Now, they're doing it over and over and over. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> that's what gets that, that dolphin sound going. <laughs> oh, I think she's doing it higher. There's multiple voices in there too, which is why we're getting different pitches too. Oh my gosh, it sounds like they're like dolphins laughing around. I don't think it matters what pitch that one's at. Like just like it's all, all, all over the place. Go make funny noises, be like mingling dolphins. <laughs> fully appreciated how the sound expanded right there. I've listened to this uh, car or uh, or in the kitchen, like I mentioned, doing a, a little dance while the kiddo eats. Um, but I don't think I'd ever appreciated the, it, the fullness that suddenly came into the sound there. So much of it has been very bouncy and has tons of space between things to give it sort of a light uplifted feel. And now right here, it feels a little more grounded, right? It feels uh, just deeper. I like the inclusive inclusivity here. Boys in bikinis, do you, do you. Whatever you wanna wear to the beach, okay? Boys in bikinis. Girls in surfboards, what? Wait a second, on surfboards, in surfboards? Do you mean somebody took a surfboard and cut it up and a woman stepped inside and then they sealed it back together so that she was actually inside the surfboard? Does that mean she can catch a wave like, like body surfing? Is that, anyhow, funny language use. Boys in bikinis. Girls in surfboards. So maybe there are two surfboards that were tied together. I'm gonna stop. Sorry guys. <laughs> Note, nose guard. Uh, I think we're talking about the like plug that a lot of people wear while they're swimming. Maybe I'm wrong though, nose guard. I think that's what we're talking about. Um, I know that there are plugs that a lot of swimmers will put over their noses if they're practicing for a long time, really wanna make sure that nothing goes up there, right? That can be super useful for singing. And that's because when you plug here and you don't allow any sound in or out of it, that actually can help you Notice when your soft palate is dropped. A lot of people have difficulties controlling or even sensing the soft palate, and they don't know then when the sound is exiting through their nose versus exiting through their mouth. So if you're having problems, especially with nasality in your sound, do yourself a favor, grab one of those nose plugs and see if you can learn how to control your soft palate better to affect that nasality in your sound. Uh This is the 
the best part, hands down. This is the best part. I I have laughed through this part so many times. I don't think I've ever caught all of the animals and it doesn't matter how many times I've heard this. I always will laugh at some point. Stingray. Okay, Stingray. Hi, Mike. I know you just peeked. <laughs> So, doo-wop, I guess is our words there. And definitely starting low, using the wa to slide up. And I, I'm saying wop at the top because it actually helps with the slide. Doo-wop! And it sounds like she's starting, I'm not entirely sure if she's in the, a low register, like a chest voice voice and going with head voice, but she might be doing that. Okay, next. Oh, that sounds almost like a seagull, but it's like, it's nasal. Oh man, <sighs> my nose itches. She even had like a little extra, like a little tiny harsh vocalization. I wonder if that was a... It almost gets like a little monkey at the end. That sounds to me like, so she's she's in obviously a head voice, but she's taking it super, super nasal and super pinch compressed there. And then at the very last one there, we get a little rattle. I think it's like an arytenoid rattle. Like think Louis Armstrong, but with this crazy high nasal <laughs> sound. I know, it sounds ridiculous. Okay, back once more. That's just harsh vocals. With a pitch. So she's got a going on. Okay, so I don't know if I've ever heard the dogfish well because I've always laughed when the jellyfish happened because it sounds like a jellyfish is puking. <laughs> One more time. Want the jellyfish. Okay, I think we've got a glottal attack followed by a uvular R. So think like your uvula, uvula. If you um, gargle salt water, that's often in a similar place. Or you can just go for a French R, right? Let's try that again. That's a Does she might, it sounds like there might be a B rather than a glottal attack on front. It's like, uh, I, I think the dogfish is meowing after <laughs> using a B and a uvular R. <laughs> I think that might be Dory. <laughs> Okay, that's definitely playing with the register flip. So chest up to head and back down. Ooh, oh my gosh, that peak was so bad. Sorry. Dogfish. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's peaking every time. I'm so sorry, you guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's the thing. She, when she flips up to her higher part, she's got like a, a lighter head voice. I, when I go to my head voice, I've got like some like opera pipes behind it. And I'm seeing on this recording and hearing this like static every time I go up to it because I know it's peaking every time. You guys can probably get to this one a little bit easier because it doesn't sound right with opera head voice. I'd have to work on this one a lot more to get it. So if you're trying to make it, go for a heavy register first and then flip up into head voice. And uh, and then when you flip back down, uh, be ridiculous. There you go, there's your answer. <laughs> that 
That's easy. That was just a straight single note. With a little bit of extra uh, in the face, I think. <laughs> what was that piranha? Watch out for that piranha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, is that what the syllables are? Watch out for that piranha. It sounds like a dog, like a yappy dog. Hey Robin, watch out for that piranha. There goes a dog. <laughs> okay, that was my best impression. You do yours. Watch out for that piranha. There goes a narwhal. Oh, that is so nasal. Hilarious because of the like thing. Yeah, I understand why you went super nasal for that sound. Some of these sounds, I think, where in the world did you come up with that? And I wonder if they just had a hilarious improv session, because that would make sense. Let's go back. Ooh, I didn't realize that the narwhal like went all, uh, had a nice little tune afterwards. It's super not pitch perfect too. Like the point is to be hilarious, ridiculous sounds. And I think it's in that area. If I squinch my nose and go like super. And like, again, don't be exact. Vocal sound, I think. <laughs> Let's try that again. I'm pretty sure we're doing a whistle, whistle with a little bit of distortion on it. I have too much distortion on it now. That's a cool sound. I think that's my favorite sound. That's the bikini whale. That's awfully high for such a big animal. A lot of times bigger animals or, or even like bigger people will end up having a longer vocal folds or something along a longer vocal tract, which makes a deeper sound. A lot of bigger, this is not tried and true. This is a general trend that lots of people and animals do break. Um, but generally bigger means longer vocal folds, which have better low notes or easier low notes, I should say. Or if the vocal tract is longer, we've got a deeper sound. Um, and if you think of like a mice uh, or the, a mice, a mouse, <laughs> uh, the like, <laughs> that kind of sound like yappy dogs, little dogs, higher, higher barks, right? Bigger dogs, lower barks. So this is very consistent in nature. It's consistent in instruments as well. Smaller string instruments play higher, bigger string instruments play lower. Um, and so a bikini whale, I did not expect to have a super freaking high sound, but it was really fun. You know what? I am persuaded that that bikini whale uh, is the true creature, the, the creature that's able to make a true J7. It's so high. It's gone all the way up and, and, and wrapped. pretty 
pretty sure, again, that sounds like we've got Cindy, right? Cindy on top. Her voice, her head voice is super light. That's the kind of light head voice that you want in ensembles because it's able to uh, just sit up there. It's able to sort of do little floaty things. Um, I think about like Voctive, for example, big ensemble of fantastic singers, and they have a soprano that just floats. That, that her timbre is perfect for ensemble work in particular to fill that gap. Very hard to find. Hashtag make rude noises all. It is ridiculously fun. We should all just agree that we can make weird, super ugly, super funny, and perhaps every now and then kind of freaking amazing noises. That is allowable. People should explore sound. And if you want to see me totally, totally ruining all kinds of sounds and maybe even sounding like a dying seagull, I'll put that video up over here. It was a long time ago. It's super fun. I hope you enjoy it. And may you fall more in love with music every day.